Good day to everyone. Welcome to Pilgrim Bible Baptist Theological Seminary. We're on Soteriology Lesson 2, Redemption. Before we talk about condemnation, kung gano'n po tayo ka-depraved, at ngayon po ay pag-usapan natin yung redemption, yung pagliligtas na ginawa ng Panginoon, the gracious provision for salvation, God bought us. So, what do we mean by redemption? The word redemption basically refers to the price that was paid to free or bring deliverance to someone. In other words, may nagbayad at meron ding lalaya. Ano po ang pagkakagamit ng redemption in the Old Testament? The word gaal. Number one, the word gaal. It means to free by the payment of a price. The emphasis of this is the price that is paid, yung pinangbayad. It was used primarily with the reference to a family obligation. Example is Boaz and Ruth in the Old Testament. Redemption, God's redeeming of people. In Psalms chapter uh, 103, verse number 4, Who redeemed thy life from destruction? Psalms 107, verse number 2, Let the redeem of the Lord say so, whom he had redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Hosea chapter 13, verse number 14, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. So, those words that uh, redeem, it, in Greek, it, uh, in Hebrew, it is gaal. Yan po yung pagkagamit. The price that was being paid, paid. The Lord Yahweh alone is our gaal. He is he is our Redeemer. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that He shall stand at the later, latter day upon the earth. Thus say the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. So, letter B, kung paan po ginamit yung uh, Redeemer in the Old Testament, hindi lang po gaal, it is also pada. Means, to free by the payment of a price. The emphasis is on freedom received. Kanina, sa gaal, yung pinangbayad, that's the emphasis. Here, the emphasis is yung kalayaan. What is uh, redeem in the New Testament? In the in Greek word, number one, esagora, es, esagorazo. Literally, to buy out. The emphasis is on the price that is in paid. In Hebrew, it is like gaal. Galatians 3.13 Letter B, lutro, means it means literally to release or free palayain by paying a price. The emphasis is on the freedom, actual deliverance or liberty that is received. So ang katumbas nito sa Hebrew ay yung pada. So lutro, ang katumbas sa Hebrew ay pada. A redeemer is Christ. The act of redemption was his death. So, paano po tayo niligtas ng Panginoon? Wala pong iba kundi sa pamamagitan ng kanyang kamatayan. The price of redemption, yung pinangbayad sa ating kaligtasan, ay walang iba kundi yung kanyang dugo. Again, the act of the redemption is His death, was His death. The price of redemption was His blood, yung pinangbayad. The result of redemption, so, uh, the act of redemption yung kamatayan ng Panginoon at minambayad niya yung kanyang dugo and the result of that is release from the bondage of sin tayo po ay palalayain sa uh, bondage ng kasalanan the extent of redemption is both Old and New Testament believer so hindi lang yung mga taong uh, nabuhay pagkat nung panahon ni Christ at nung pagkatapos niyang namatay kundi mismo yung mga Old Testament saints, mga Old Testament believers na naniniwala sa darating na Masaya, yun po yung extent ng pagkaligtas ng Panginoon. The duration of redemption is forever. Yung pagkakaligtas po sa atin ng Panginoon, hindi po ito bigla na lang nawawala. It is forever. It is everlasting. It is eternal. So, the believer's future deliverance is emphasized. Deliverance from God's wrath in the tribulation. So, saan emphasize yung, uh, saan ta tayo niligtas ng Panginoon? Mula sa kanyang galit. Deliverance from death by the resurrection. 
okay and again deliverance from death by the resurrection so niligtas tayo ng Panginoon sa kanyang galit okay and then sa ka, sa kamatayan na that we are facing Let's illustrate redemption in the Old Testament. All Old Testament sacrifices, lahat po ng ginagawa nila na pagsasacrifice ng Old Testament are a picture, paglalarawan, or symbol of the great sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. It is foreshadowing. It is a picture, a symbol. Lahat ng pagsasacrifice na ginagawa nila ng Old Testament sa dadating na Mesaya, na Kristos, o na tagapaglitas. Walang iba kundi ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. In this way, the slain innocent animals, okay, foreshadowed or prefigured the innocent lamb of God whose blood was shed as a substitute sacrifice for the sins of the world. That's why in John chapter 1, verse number 29, John the Baptist says, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. The substitutionary sacrifice of Christ is the predominant theme of the Bible. Pag sinabi po nating predominant, ito po yung uh, dominant, nakakaangat, o it is emphasized in the Bible. Note the following two which colorate Old Testament sacrifice with Christ sacrifice. Number one, the sacrifice had to be voluntary sacrifice. So wala pong uh, sino mang pumilit sa Panginoon sa Kristo na ibigay niya ang kanyang buhay. It is a voluntary in the Old Testament, yung mga nagsasacrifice, voluntary po silang nagsasacrifice. Uh, unblemished sacrifice, so dapat po walang sakit, walang uh, hindi po ito uh, madumi yung kanilang mga sinasacrifice. Unblemished, walang kasalanan. Number three, an innocent sacrifice. Innocente. Uh, hindi po matanda. A bloody sacrifice and a vicarious sacrifice. Kasi sinabi na itong vicarious, yung substitute po. Last, a satisfying sacrifice. So, lahat po ng uh, qualification o qualities ng practice nila sa Old Testament na kanilang sacrifice ay ganun din po kay Jesus Christ. Voluntary and blemish innocent, bloody, vicarious, and satisfying. And we will explain that later. The Old Testament sacrifice could not take away sins. Ang sabi po ni Dr. John C. Whitcomb, the sacrifice, the, six, the scripture tells us that something really did happen to the Israelite offerer when he came to the right uh, altar with the appropriate sacrifice. What happened was temporal, finite, finite external, and legal. Not eternal, infinite, eternal, and soteriological. So, in other words, nung Old Testament po, kapag sila po ay nagsasacrifice ng tupa, hindi po ibig sabihin na huhugasan na po yung kasalanan nila. Ang nangyayari po, yung galit ng Diyos na dapat mapupunta sa kanila ay napupunta po doon sa sinacrifice na animal, na lamb. So, let's study yung mga sacrifices nung kanilang kapanahonan in the Old Testament. Meron pong dalawang annual sacrifices. When we say annual, one time per year. Meron pong dalawa. Unang-uno po yung Passover. Celebrated on the 14th day of the month. The lamb was without blemish. Ito po yung kanilang ritual. The lamb was killed, papatayin, and the lamb's blood applied. So, Sacrifice was rotted in fire and totally eaten by the offerers and families. The blood was sprinkled on the door post. So, ito pong sacrifice ay na lamb na to, na without blemish, papatayin po nila. At yung dugo po nila noon, ia-apply po nila doon sa may kanilang pintuan, sa taas at sa, sa magkabilang gilid. The meaning of this is the deliverance of Christ's sacrifice. Di ba yung Old Testament? Sabi, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. So, the meaning of uh, this annual sacrifices, the Passover, is the deliverance of Christ's uh, sacrifice. The symbol is, Christ is our Passover lamb. 
Number two po, yung tinatawag po nating Day of Atonement o mas kilalang Yom Kippur. The ritual is celebrated on the 10th day of the 7th month. The priest did all the work. The priest offered for himself two goats for sin offering. So, first goat is slain and then the second goat, uh, sin bearer, and the blood is sprinkled in the holy of holiest. So, ito naman pong yung Yom Kippur. Ang gumagawa lang po nito ay yung priest. Meron pong dalawang goat. Yung unang goat po ay uh, sa Yom Kippur, hindi po sheep ang ina inaalay, kundi po goat. Yung unang goat po, yun po yung papatayin. At yung pangalawa pong goat, okay, yun po yung tinatawag na scapegoat. Kung saan, ibubuos yung dugo dun sa, sa ulo ng goat na yun. At pagkatapos po, ay uh, ililigaw po siya sa wilderness. Sacrifice. One goat was sacrificed bearing the penalty of sin and the other goat was led into the wilderness never to be seen again, picturing the removal of sin, meaning the forgiveness of Christ's sacrifice. The symbol is this, that Christ is our scapegoat who removed our sin. So in Seventh-day Adventist, yung second goat daw po doon, yung scapegoat ay si Satan. So mali po yun, ano, hindi po si Satan yung scapegoat. Ang scapegoat po, na isinisimbol po doon ay walang iba kundi si Jesus Christ hindi po si Satan o, only Jesus Christ yung makakapagtanggal po ng ating kasalanan ang makakapagkuga sa ito kung sasabihin po natin na si ang sinisimbolo po ang pinipicture po at pinaporsyado ng scapegoat ay si Satanas it means na part din po siya ng ating kaligtasan so mali po yun so ano naman the word atonement found 16 times in Leviticus chapter 16 means to cover. Okay? Yung yung ginagawa po, po nila noon, yung kasalanan nako-cover po, nako-cover lang po. But in the New Testament when we read the book of Hebrews, yung ating po kasalanan ay hindi lang po, hindi po nako-cover lang. Kundi po tayo ay hinugasan na sa dugo ng final sacrifice. Walang iba kundi ang ating Panginoong Kristo. The Old Testament saints were saved on credit in anticipation of the cross. So, ang tanong, yung mga Old Testament saints, bakit sila, papaano po sila naliligtas? Same, by faith, by the grace of God, by faith alone sa Messiah. Okay. These Old Testament saints, naliligtas po sila, again, on credit in the anticipation of the cross. Yung paparating na final sacrifice, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. So, they looking forward dun sa Messiah na dadating, sa tagapagitas, yung final sacrifice, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. The very fact that they were doing that by faith, it is um, illustrating or showing their faith dun sa tagapagitas na darating. Old Testament sacrifices covered sin and Christ's blood cleanses from sin or removes or takes away our sin. Ano naman po yung ma iba pang mga sacrifices? Five-dimensional view of perfect sacrifice. Jesus Christ who cleanses us daily. Una-una po yung burnt offering. So, sana po nababasa nyo. The ritual, it is voluntary offer uh, laying on the hands slain by the offerer blood poured animal totally burned up the sacrifice is totally burned wholly consumed the meaning the fullness of Christ sacrifice so yung talagang walang ititira so the death of Christ the sacrifice of Christ is sufficient the symbol is Christ was the complete sacrifice kaya nga once and for all yung ginawa ng ating Panginoong Kristo. number two meal offering Fine flour mixed with frank, uh, frankincense, oil, salt, no leaven, a pure gift to God. The flawlessness, the meaning of this is the flawlessness of Christ's sacrifice. Kaya wala pong leaven, wala pong pagpaalsa. Christ was the perfect sacrifice. That's the symbol. Number three, peace offering. Ang ritual po ay ganito, spotless lamb or goat, lying on, the ha uh, lying on off hands, Slain by operer, uh, sacrifice, part sacrifice at part itin. Yung, yung iba ay isa sakripisyo at yung iba ay kakainin ng operer. 
a peaceful fellowship between God and man. So, ito po yung meaning nito ay the, the fruitfulness of Christ's sacrifice. Christ's are peace with God. Number four, sin offering. Offering was burned outside the camp. For sins committed against God commands. The meaning of this is cover the principle of sin. Symbol, Christ is the atonement for sins guilt. And the last one, yung tinatawag po nating trespass offering. So, the offering plus restitution is given for sins committed against holy things and against His command. Meaning, cover the practice of sin. And the symbol of this is Christ is the atonement for sins damage. So, we have two annual sacrifices in the Old Testament. The Passover and the Yom Kippur. And yung mga iba pang mga offering, mga sacrifices. Lima po ito. It is a five-dimensional view of a perfect sacrifice. Jesus Christ who cleanses us daily. The first three offering, burnt meal and peace, are called sweet-smelling Savior. The last two offerings, sin and trespass, are called a non-sweet Savior. So, yung sin offering, sin, yung sin offering and then trespass offering, hindi po sila tinawag na sweet-smelling Savior. Christ became a sweet-smelling Savior to the Father. Yung tatlong, tatlong ano na yun, uh, burnt meal and peace. Christ became a sin offering and a curse for us. Sabi po ng Biblia sa Galatians, sumpain siyang nakahang doon sa cross. Uh, cursed. May sumpa yung nandun nakahang sa cross. And it is it is because uh, Christ loved us so much kung bakit niya po yun ginawa. Siya po ay naging curse, naging kasalanan at uh, sumpa para sa atin. Now, let's talk about how redemption was provided. Again, redemption, God's pro- gracious provision for our salvation, He bought us. Um, Christ provided our redemption and fulfilled the Old Testament prophetic symbols and type of animal sacrifices. So, lahat ng pinag-usapan natin kanina, uh, pinulfill yun ng Panginoon. By giving His life, as the purchase price necessary to release man from the penalty, power, and one day from the presence of sin. So, by giving the li- His life, the Lord of the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, and shedding of His blood, okay, naging dahilan upang tayo mapalaya, upang tayo maligtas. And fr- release from what? From the penalty or from the curse, okay, sa bayad sa kasalanan sa kapangyarihan ng kasalanan and one day from the presence of sin. That's why uh, rapture will take place because God will complete our salvation. It means He will save us from the presence sa presensya ng kasalanan. Jesus Christ's substitutionary death and shedding of His blood was the redemption price. The substitutionary death of Christ for Christ also had once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that He might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Ang kamatayan po ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo, it was predicted in the Old Testament na nahula na po yan. Makikita po natin yan sa buhay po ng Abraham. Abraham by faith said to his son Isaac, God will provide himself a lamb for a birth opening. Abraham's offering of Isaac on Mount Moriah was not only a test of faith, but it was, it is also a foreshadowing of God offering His only begotten Son. So, hindi lang po yun pagpapakita. Yung story na inalay po ni Abraham sa Diyos, ang kanyang anak, si Isaac, kanya kay sa isang anak, na hindi lang po yun story of the test of faith, but it is a story of foreshadowing that God the Father will offer His only begotten Son okay, upang iligtas tayo sa ating mga kasalanan. Christ's death for sinners was predicted event. Example number two, Isaiah, who lived over 700 years before Christ, foretold of Christ's additionary death with these words. So, Isaiah chapter 53, the gospel in the Old Testament 
was found in Isaiah chapter 53, the heart of the book. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. The Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall bear their iniquities. He bear the sins of many. So, example number two sa prophecy po ni Prophet Isaiah, nakita niya na that uh, Christ will, the Father, the satisfactory death of the only begotten Son of the Father. Example number three, Daniel, speaking of Messiah's death, said, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. It means, uh, he shall have nothing. Diba? When Christ he is, uh, came into the world, he is rich but became poor. Iniwan niya ang karangian ng kalangitan. He emptied himself. And letter B, Christ's death for sinners was a fulfilled event. So, like Abra uh, what Abraham did, it is not a test of faith but a foreshadowing of Christ. Hinula ni Daniel. And then, hinula din ni Prophet Isaiah. And in the New Testament, it is Christ's death for sinners was a fulfilled event. The New Testament word emphasized the substitutionary death of Christ in two words. Unang, unang word, unang Greek word yung yung anti. Okay? The meaning of this is to take the place of someone else. So, substitute. Ang ganon. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered, but to minister and to give His life a ransom for many. So, yung for dyan, the preposition for, anti in Greek, okay, to take place of someone else. Number two Greek word, paano ni-render yung salitang, uh, yung in yung substitutionary death ng Panginoon. Okay? Hooper. What is the meaning of this? To do something on the behalf of someone else. So, okay. Num yung anti, to take the place of someone else. So, substitution. So, dapat ikaw. So, sinabtitute. Samantalang yung hooper, to do something. Gagawin mo yung isang bagay on the behalf of someone else. So, just wait. I will charge my Scripture emphasizes the fact of Christ's substitutionary death using the New Testament Greek word hooper. So, madalas ginagamit sa Bible kung in-emphasize yung substitutionary death ng Panginoon ay hindi anti, kunti lang yung pagkakagamit ng anti. But, the word hooper, on the behalf of someone, doing something on the behalf of someone, gagawin mo yung isang bagay alang-alang, alang-alang sa iba na dapat sila yung gumawa. So, this is my body which is given for you, hooper. This is the cup in the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. Okay? The bread that I will give is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gave it his life for the sheep. I lay down my life for the sheep, Hooper. He prophesied that Jesus should not die for that nation, and not for that nation only, Hooper. Christ died for the ungodly, at marami pa mga verses. Christ died for our sin. Christ gave himself for our sin. Christ loved me and gave himself for me. Christ made a course curse for us. Again, Hooper. Uh... Marami pa mga verses to do something in behalf of someone. Christ also suffered for us. Uh, he laid down his life for us. So, Christ's death for sinner was an important event. Yung kamatayan ng ating Panginoong Isa Kristo, as far as concern is, sinner is concerned, it is an important event for us. Sapagkat sa ganitong bagay, uh, yung ginawa ng Panginoon, tayo ay naligtas. Christ's death for sinners was an important event because the key truth, the cross of the gospel message is the vicarious or the substitutionary death of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the key truth. The very central message of the Bible is the Lord Jesus Christ's death and the shedding of His blood. 
and also His resurrection. So, pag-aralan din natin yan. Christ's death for in the place of sinner is the most essential element of God's plan of salvation. 1 Corinthians 15.13 The words of the first, first of all mean first in importance. Diba? So, si Apostle Paul, si 1 Corinthians chapter 15, pinaliwanag niya, in-explain niya kung anong gospel, yung kamatayan ng Panginoon at yung kanyang muling pagkabuhay. So, first of all, sabi ng pang, ni Apostle Pablo, meaning first in importance, showing Christ's substitutionary death and bodily resurrection to be the most essential content of the gospel message. Christ's death for sinner was a blessed event. So, it is not just an important event, it is also a blessed event. Why? Christ became the sinner's substitute so that we could have life. Meron, nagkaroon tayo ng buhay. Uh, I will give for the life of the world. Uh, tayo po ay naging mga matuwid. We may be, uh, we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. For He had made Him to be sin for us. Who knows? Sin. Sana naging kasalanan na walang alam na kasalanan. Hindi nagkaroon ng kasalanan. Ngunit naging kasalanan para sa atin. That we may, uh, might be made the righteous, righteousness of God in Him. Number three, be delivered from this present evil world. Be redeemed from the curse of the law. Be resurrected and raptured to live together with Him someday. Be redeemed from iniquity and means purified and zealousness. So, uh, di ba, nung hindi pa tayo ligtas, hindi pa tayo nakakilala sa Panginoon, kung nagpatuloy tayo sa mga ginagawa natin, siguro nakulong na tayo, siguro naging mapangit na yung buhay natin, niligtas tayo ng Panginoon, Kung hindi tayo niligtas, magpapatuloy tayo sa mga ginagawa natin. At magiging dahilan para maging masama yung buhay natin. And Christ became the sinner's substitute so that we would have an example to suffer patiently. So, sabi ng Biblia, walang, walang servant ang nakakataas sa kanyang master. So, Christ suffered patiently. He set an example. At sa ating mga mananampalataya, may mga persecutions. Okay? And Christ living as an example. He suffered for us. But we should follow His step. So, may mga persecutions. Mahirap din ng buhay kristyano. Be brought to God. Na-reconcile tayo sa Panginoon. And... Question. Again. Have you been redeemed? Maraming mga tao. Kahit Bible student na. O yung iba. May kilala ko. Pastor na. Kala niya saved na siya. But knowing these truths, mas lalo nating mauunawaan, mas lalo nating, kung ikaw talaga, mis, ligtas ka na, redeem ka na. Knowing these truths, mas lalo mong mauunawaan kung gaano kahalaga yung ginawa ng ating Panginoon sa buhay natin. Okay. Ngayon po, pag-usapan naman natin yung price, yung pinambayad ng Panginoon, yung kanyang dugo, redeemed by the blood. Ngayon, much confusion exists today over the issue of the blood of Christ. Maraming mga confusion, maraming mga issue pagdating sa dugo ng ating Panginoong Sokristo. Debate rages concerning the nature and efficacy of Christ's blood. Ito po yung mga karaniwang tinatanong dahil maraming mga confusion. Number one question, is Christ literal blood, yung literal ba na dugo ng Panginoon, efficacious or is his death efficacious or is it both? Yung dugo ba ng Panginoon, yun ba yung nakapagligtas sa atin? O yung kanyang kamatayan ba, yun ba ang nakapagligtas sa atin? O both, or both. Okay? Number two, is Christ's blood eternal? Or did it originate at his conception in the womb of Mary? Yung dugo ba ng Panginoon sa Kristo, eternal ba yun? O yung kanyang dugo ay nanggaling kay Mary? sapagkat kung paniniwalaan na ang kanyang dugo ay na galing kay Mary so at ang at ang buhay ay nasa dugo at ang sa dugo na papas ang kasalanan it means sabi ng iba ay meron kasalanan ng Panginoon so when we are singing are you washed in the blood say by the blood there is power in the blood nothing but the blood what blessed truth that we are communicating the answer to this question, the student of God's word must not speculate and go beyond what the scripture clearly teaches. The Bible clearly teaches the following proposition. So, 
yung mga sagot po na ito ay masasag mga tanong na ito ay masasagot natin sa ating mga pag-aaralan ngayon. Well, it is in the power of the blood of the Lamb that we are saved. That's why yung mga paborito nating hymn song are you washed in the blood of the Lamb. Redemption price was the blood of Christ shed on Calvary, Calvary's cross. Okay. Yung pinambayad po ng ating Panginoon ay yung kanyang dugo na dumanak doon sa krus ng Kalbaryo. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse number 18 it says to 20 For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition of your fathers. So, saan ta po tayo na iligtas ng Panginoon? But, with the precious blood of Christ. What is the price? The precious blood of Christ. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who very was for ordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in this last time for you. So, the shed blood of Christ, the shedding of blood is absolutely essential for remission of sin. Ang ang dugo po ng ating Panginoong Kristo, it is absolutely essential, kinakailangan upang mahugasan tayo, upang matubos tayo mula sa ating mga kasalanan. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul, for it is the blood that make it atonement for the soul. And when almost all things are by the law, purged blood, and without shedding of blood, is no remission of sin. Sabi po ng Biblia, in both and old in old and both uh, old and new testament, both of them without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. That's why the literal blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, it it is the price. Okay? It ayun po ang price ng ating redemption. Sabi po ni William Evans, the atonement is the scarlet cord running through every page in the entire Bible. Cut the Bible anywhere and it bleeds. It is read with redempted truth. Letter B, Christ had to die a bloody death to atone for man's sins. Again, letter A, ang dugo po ng Panginoong Kristo, it is absolutely essential upang tayo po ay matubos sa ating mga kasalanan. Bakit? Kasi sa Old Testament as sa New Testament, sabi without uh, kapag walang shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Letter B, Christ had to die a bloody death to atone for man's sins. In the Old Testament, sacrifice pre-prigued Christ bloody death. And in the New Testament, reaffirms the necessity for Christ die by shedding in His blood. Christ could not simply bleed without dying. Neither could He die without bleeding. Both were necessary for man's salvation. The act of his redemption is his death and the price of his redemption is his blood. So it is both. It is efficacious. It is sufficient. It is efficient. It is necessary. The death and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Some, sinasabi nila, naniniwala sila, na yung blood, symbol lang daw yun ng death ni, uh, ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo. But the, bl- the Bible clearly teaches that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Bo- both Christ's offering of His body and His shedding of blood were necessary for redemption. It is illustrated in the Lord's Table. The Lord's Table is a reminder of this truth. Okay? The wine represents the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and His body. Okay? Repre- uh, the bread represents His body. The book of Hebrews emphasizes the both Christ's offering of his body and his blood for the redemption of man. Christ offered his body, Acts chapter 9 and chapter 10, then Acts 9, 12, chapter 13, Christ shed his blood. Christ offered his body and Christ shed his blood. Letter D, uh, Christ's blood was literal physical and human blood. Let, let me repeat that. Christ's blood was literal. It is not symbolical. Katulad ng mga evangelical, pinaniniwala ng ibang mga evangelical, it is literal. 
physical and human blood. Jesus was the God man, total God and total man. His spiritual nature was totally divine. His physical nature was totally human. According to the Orthodox doctrine of the person of Christ, the human nature of Jesus Christ must be genuine and complete. This would also require ordinary human blood just as it requires ordinary human flesh, ordinary human bones. The scripture, the scripture confirmed this. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, He, our Lord Jesus Christ, also Himself took part of the same. Hebrews chapter 2 verse number 14. So, Christ has a genuine and complete ordinary, ordinary human blood and ordinary human flesh. Pero, let me clear na, hindi lang basta the uh, ordinary na katulad ng blood natin. Because we were sinful. Ang Panginoon ay hindi. It is not merely the blood. Hindi lang basta yung dugo ng Panginoon. But the shed blood. Let me emphasize that. Uh, lagyan natin ng, ng pen. The shed blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The shed blood on Calvary's that saved. When the proper emphasis is placed on the word shed, the modern confusion over the blood issue is resolved. Kaya hindi pa pwedeng maging symbolical lang yung dugo na sinasabi. It is the literal because the shed blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So yung mga modern confusion kung ito ba ay literal o symbolical lang. So when you say when you say shed okay. Tapos ang usapan. It is a literal blood. For this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Without the shedding of blood is no remissions. In Hebrews 9:27, 22. <clears throat> the cross of Christ and the blood of Christ are theologically indivisible in scripture. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto him, unto himself. So, when we say cross in the Bible or when every time the Christ time marks cross i love the cross it means it represents it always represents the death of our lord jesus christ so the cross the death of christ and the blood the literal blood of our lord jesus christ is theologically indivisible hindi mo maipaghihiwalay sa salita ng dios christ's death and blood are linked together in the scripture christ died for us justified by his blood <clears throat> Jesus' suffering is linked with this shed blood. <coughs> me. Wherefore, Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without outside the gate. Number four, the connection between Christ's blood, his offering of his flesh and his death on the cross in Ephesians chapter 2 verse number 16. By the blood in his flesh by the cross. So interesting analogy. So, pares lang yan. Ito yung babasahin natin. In the Old Testament, sacrificial system, the blood of the animal was applied on the horns on the altar. Just as the horns held the sacrifice to the altar, so Christ was fastened to the cross by spikes. The blood applied to the horns was perhaps a symbolic foreshadowing of Christ's blood that would spurt out when He was held to the cross. So, ayan po yung uh, picture. Yung horn, dun sa altar. The rest of the blood was then poured out of the base of the altar into the ground. Okay. In similar manner, Christ was spilled below the cross. So, ano yung, in other words, nung, in Old Testament, sacrificial system, yung blood nung sinakapais nilang lamb or goat, na-apply po dun sa horns ng altar. So, ano pong implication nun? Ano pong minaporsyado nun? The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, perhaps, symbolically, okay, pinoforshadow po nito that uh, Christ spurred out uh, His blood when He was held to the cross. So, nangyari po yun. Maigita po natin yan sa gospel. And then, yung ibang blood naman ng animals, doon naman po sa may base ng altar. Ganon din po sa ating Panginoon, the blood of Christ was spilled below the cross. John chapter 19, verse number 34. Whenever the Bible speaks of salvation by His blood, it is speaking to the momentous, when we say momentous 
uh, very very important great final complete and fully efficacious sacrifice that Christ made once and for all and on Calvary that past complete sacrifice gives present blessing so yung kamatayan ng ating Panginoon at yung kanyang dugo na dumanak doon sa cross ng Calvaryo and every time it is indivisible hindi mo mapaghiwala yan and it is momentous very important great final complete once and for all okay and fully efficacious sufficient efficient for us to be saved sa uh, Christ made once and for all on Calvary so and it give us a present blessing not just a present blessing but a, a future blessing and in a, sa present blessing na na-receive natin propitiation number two, justification tas na tayo redemption redeem tayo ng Panginoon intimacy with God we have fellowship with God forgiveness may pa tayong kapatawaran reconciliation or peace dalawa pong ibig sabihin ng peace sa Bible peace yung sa pakiramdam po natin kapayapaan magkaiba po yung peace with God and then peace of God peace of God yung binibigyan ng Panginoon peace with God yun nangyari nung tayo ay nanampalataya hindi na kaaway ng Panginoon meron ng reconciliation and boldness in prayer we can cry to God Abba Father sanctification or transformation and power to overcome so His blood cleanses us from all our sins And that is the, the the Lord Jesus Christ. The act of His redemption is His death, and the price of His redemption is eh, His blood. So the an ano the answer for sa lahat ng mga confusion na confusion mga theologian yun. Is it literal? Yes, it is literal. I believe we believe it is literal blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It, it is not symbolic. Hindi hindi niya sinisimbo, sinisimbolize yung kamatayan ng Panginoon Be, because uh, specifically in Romans chapter 5 okay pinaghiwalay yung death and blood see that uh, blood or death and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ it is a two different things so But if we walk in the light, as He in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all our sin. By the blood of the Lamb, there is power in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The question, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Ito mga literal question eh. Ngayon, pag-usapan natin yung application ng redemption na ginawa ng ating Panginoon. The efficacy of Christ's atonement. What do we mean by efficacy? When we say efficacy, it simply refers to the power to produce, produce an effect. Okay? Kapangyarahan para mag-produce ng uh, result or kung ano yung naging epekto. Ngayon, the question here is this. Um, when we speak of the efficaciousness of Christ's death, the question that needs to be answered is, What did the death of Christ accomplish? Ano ba yung na-accomplish? Ano ba yung natapos? Ano ba yung hanggang saan ba yung kamatayan ng Panginoon? Ano ba yung nag-accomplish niya? Exactly, what did Christ did what, what did Christ make atonement for? Saan niya ba tayo iniligtas? What does uh, Christ death have on the believer? Ano bang ginawa nito para sa atin? The basic answer is this. Christ died with the specific and exclusive purpose of paying for man's sin. In other words, namatay ang Panginoong Iso Kristo with the specific, explicit, precise purpose na pagbayaran niya, bayaran niya yung ating mga kasalanan. Christ's death is efficacious, efficacious to atone for our justification. What is that? Freedom from sin's penalty. O sa parusa, kalayaan sa parusa ng kasalanan. This is instantaneous. It occurs at the moment a sinner places his faith in finished work of Christ Jesus. Nung tayo po ay nanampalataya sa Panginoon sa Kristo bilang ating Diyos sa tagapagligtas, instant po yung 
ating justification. In instant po na pinalaya na tayo dun sa parusa ng kasalanan. Okay? Ano pa po? Ano pa po ang naging result ng uh, redemption ng kamatayan ng ating ng Panginoon? Number two, our sanctification. What is this? Sanctification means freedom from sin's power. If justification is freedom from sin's penalty sa parusa ng kasalanan, sanctification is freedom from sin's power sa kapangyarihan ng kasalanan. Is this is this instant? No. If if this is instant, ituturo sana ng Biblia ang tinatawag nating sinless perfection. Pero hindi po. This is progressive. Pag sinabi po nating progressive, progreso, merong proseso. It occurs as a process throughout the believer's earthly life after his justification. So, kaya nga, sabi ng Biblia, uh, tayo ay mamuhay sa Espiritu. Sabi ng Romans chapter 8, verse number 8, So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Sa, sa Inhikaya tayo ng Panginoon na mamuhay tayo sa Espiritu. Pag sa Espiritu, sa Espiritu. Pag sa laman, pag sa laman. And our sanctification is step by step. Our freedom from sin is not instant, hindi biglaan, but it is progressive. Mula sa pangyarihan ng kasalanan, progressive po ito as we live in the Spirit. Romans chapter 8. Ano pa po? Christ's death is efficacious to atone for our glorification. What is this? Freedom from sin's presence. Nung tayo po ay iniligtas ng Panginoon, instant yung ating justification. Yung parusa ng kasalanan, wala na. Yung curse ng kasalanan, wala na. Ano pa? Freedom from the power of sin. It is not instant, but it is progressive as we live by the Spirit. Namumuhay tayo sa Espiritu. Number three, our glorification. So, is this instant? No. Is this progressive? No. It is in the future. This is ultimate. It will occur at the moment of physical resurrection when we are exalted to spiritual completeness, immorality, and incorruption. So, kailan po mangyayari ito? Kapag po nag-rapture na, mga kaibigan, mga kapatid. Who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Now, um, Christ's death, letter B, Christ's death is effective to pay for the sins committed before the Old Testament. Again, the extent of the, red, the redemption of our Lord Jesus Christ is not only for the New Testament believer, but also in the Old Testament believer. Yung mga taong nabuhay bago pa ang Panginoong Sokristo. Ang kamatayan ng Panginoong Sokristo ay effective mismo dun sa mga kasalanan nung Old Testament pa. Papaano nangyari ito? The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 verse number 25, the remission of sins that are past tumutukoy sa mga Old Testament saints through the forbearance of God. What do we mean by that? How God remit or pass over the sins committed previous, previous to Christ's atoning death? How could He forbear? This is the answer. God saved the Old Testament believer because of the guaranteed certain payment His Son would make Him in the future. In other sense, in on credit, they were saved in a sense on credit with a view of future payment. Again, yung mga Old Testament saints, yung mga nanampalataya na noon sa dadating na Messiah, sa final sacrifice, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, they put their faith sa paparating na tagapagligtas, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. They were, again, they were saved on credit with the view of future payment. God could forgive and justify Old Testament believer because in His sovereign, omniscient mind, payment was a certain as if it had already been made. Kaya nga sa Ephesians chapter 2 verse number 10, uh, verse number 9, tinitingnan tayo ng Panginoon because of His sovereignty and omniscient mind, nakikita na tayo ng Panginoon na nakaupo na doon sa heavenly places. According to God's plan, Christ was so destined to die that He is called the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. His dying as a Lamb and shedding His precious blood was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in the, this last time for you. Again, to summarize this, this, uh, this point, Christ's death is effective to pay for the sins committed before the 
cross the extent of Christ's redemption no mga Old Testament saints mga believer noon tinitingnan nila yung paparating na Messiah they put their faith dun sa paparating na tagapagligtas and because of that on the view of future uh, payment in a sense they were saved kinout na ng Panginoon yun Letter C, Christ's death is effective to pay for the sins committed after the cross. So, no question with that. Letter D, tanong, is earthly physical healing in the atonement? Nung, nilig- nung ang Panginoon ba ay namatay? Katulad ng mga pinaniniwalaan ng mga, ng mga prosperity gospel, ng mga uh, iba pang mga nagsasabing sila daw ay tunay na Christian, Nung ang Panginoong Isokristo daw ay namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo, hindi lang daw siya namatay sa ating mga kasalanan, kundi namatay din siya dun sa, ma- sa kahira- para sa iligtas tayo sa ating kahirapan, sa ating mga sakit na nararamdaman. Did Jesus die for our sickness? In other words, when Jesus died, did He die not only to save us from our sins, but also to save us from sickness, disease, physical deformity, etc.? This is the evidence, sabi nila. Ito ang ebidensya na namatay din ng Panginoon para tayo ay gumaling sa ating mga physical na nararamdaman. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse number 24. By whose by whose stripes you were healed. Ba? O sabi, o nakita nyo, in 1 Peter chapter 2, sinasabi na sa kanyang mga stripes, na sa kanyang mga latay, tayo ay napagaling. But what is the proper exegesis of that verse? What is the biblical explanation? The healing there is not physical but spiritual in this verse. It is not healing from sins. The word sins occur two times in this verse. Meaning, hindi, <clears throat> meaning ang context ng healing dito ay hindi yung healing ng mga karamdaman natin. Kundi yung uh, sakit na kasalanan. Number, number two. Peter is quoting Isaiah chapter 53 verse number 5 which is specifically referring to Christ dying for our transgression for our iniquities or for our spiritual peace with God. Matthew 8:17 himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. Ano yung supposed evidence nila pangalawa sa so Matthew chapter 8. Sabi, God Jesus Christ took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses yung ating masanga sakit but what is the proper exegesis biblical explanation of this verse Jesus miraculously healed people physical ailments while he ministered on earth he is fulfilling a prophecy prior to his going on the cross meaning ang context the surrounding context sa Matthew chapter 8 on that time na nagpapagaling ang Panginoon okay it is to fulfill the prophecy. But, it is not absolute that forever na uh, lahat ng mananampalataya sa Panginoon na pagagalingin niya tayo sa ating mga sakit. Okay, na, ikaw na nampalataya ka sa Panginoon, hindi ka na magkakaroon ng sakit. Number two, <clears throat> early physical healing cannot be included in Christ's atonement for the following reason. So, ayan nga, Bakit hindi hindi pa pwede? Bakit yung kamatayan ng Panginoon ay hindi 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 kasama yung mga uh, physical healing natin? Letter A, all statements in the Bible regarding Christ's death refer specifically to his payment for sin. So hindi sin binabanggit doon na yung kamatayan ng Panginoon ay para iligtas din tayo sa ating mga sakit na nararamdaman. Letter B, man most important need is spiritual not physical. Christ that Christ died to meet our spiritual need. So, letter If Christ did atone for man's temporal physical problem, we would expect the following to be true. So, kung ang Panginoong Kristo ay namatay din para sa ating mga physical na nararamdaman, mga sakit, ito dapat ang mangyari. Walang mananampalataya na mayroong sakit. But we see in the Bible, Paul Meron siyang sakit. Timothy, meron siyang sakit. Kaya sabi ni Apostle Paul din ka Little Wine. Tropimus in 2 Timothy, merong sakit. Number two, 
kung ang kamatayan ng Panginoon ay kasama yung ating mga physical ailments, ito ang dapat natin expect. Godly believers would have the potential of never dying a natural death. But Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27, and as it is appointed unto man wants to die, men unto wants to die. So kasama yung mga believer, but after this the judgment. The third C, number three, God would have clarified and expanded upon the notion that Christ died for our physical health, but in the fact, Scripture does not. Dapat ididiin ng Scripture. Dapat papaliwanag ng Scripture. Kung obscure man tong verse na to about physical healing sa kamatayan ng Panginoon, if it is included, in the other passage, in the other book, verses, it will clarify. Pero wala pong binanggit ng Panginoon. When Christ died, He would have borne our sickness. The Bible, however, teaches that He was once offered to bear the sins of many. Christ died so that we could have eternal life, not an illness-free life. Namatay ang Panginoon upang magkaroon tayo ng buhay na walang hanggan, hindi para mag- maging healthy tayo o maging ma- ma- free na tayo sa lahat ng mga sakit. O kaya, if that is true, di sana, hindi tayo maahawaan, walang kasyanong maahawaan ng virus sa kapanahon ngayon. For many godly believers to have a thorn in the flesh is according to God's plan and is for the purposes, purpose of bringing Him glory. We know, infirmities, um, mga sakit, cancer, anong pang mga problema na dumadagok sa atin bilang mga kasyano. Marami tayong mga lesson at nare-realize at mas, mas napapalapit pa tayo sa Panginoon sa mga sa mga bagay na nararanasan natin na mga may hirap o madalas sa mga sakit. Kaya nga, sabi ng isang preacher, uh, ang mga kristyano mas natututo pag nasasaktan. And that is true. By dying for our sin, note that Christ did make it possible that one day in heaven we will be free from pain, sickness, and sorrow. But that is a future tense. So, Par, no, namatay ang Panginoon, yes, one day in heaven, no more pain, no more sickness, no more sorrow. But, it is in the future, hindi po ngayon. Ngayon, we need to persevere. Now, let's study the, the extent of Christ's redemption, of Christ's atonement. Is Christ's atonement limited? For Him did Christ die? Mm. Okay, let's uh, mag-review tayo The word redemption means Basically refers to the price that was paid to be free Or being delivered to someone The act of redemption was Christ's death And the price of redemption was Christ's blood Now, let's study the extent Of Christ's atonement Yung uh, sakop Kanino ba namatay ang Panginoon? How many people did Christ die for? Did He pay the price for all men's sins? Lahat ba ng kasalanan ng tao ay binayaran niya? O iilang tao lang? One of the points of hyper-Calvinism is the belief that Christ did not actually die for all people. So itong mga hyper-Calvinist, mga Calvinist, maniniwala sila na hindi namatay ang Panginoon sa lahat ng tao. Many good people teach a concept known as limited atonement. So they coined their, uh, this, this teaching as limited atonement at tinatawag ding particular redemption. So, limited atonement and particular particular redemption, it's the same. Five points of Calvinism. Calvinism. Total depravity. Unconditional election. Limited atonement. Irresistible grace. And perseverance of the saints. And what we're studying, uh, what we will study to, uh, in this time is limited atonement. In the, sabi ng isang theologian na Calvinist si Lorraine Boetner, In the intention and secret plan of God, Christ died for the elect only. Sa mga pinigil lang daw siya na matay. Suppose evidence appealed by, to the, by those who teach that Christ's atonement had a limited provision. So, ito yung mga evidence nila. Number one, in Matthew 1.21, He shall save His people, yung kanyang, uh, kanyang tao, from their sins, yung kanyang mga pinili. Number two, Isaiah, for the transgressions of my people was he stricken. So, so elect. John chapter 10, verse number 11. The good shepherd gave his life 
For the sheep, I lay down my life for the sheep. Sa mga two pa lang. The church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Suppose evidence, appeal for those of this, again, number five, Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Uh, Matthew, to give his life a ransom for many, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given uh, me, for they are mine. So, makikita natin, do above scripture teach a limited atonement? So, makikita natin, di ba? Parang mga selected lang talaga yung yung ini- ililigtas ng Panginoon. But, these scriptures, okay, teach a limited atonement na namatay lang ang Panginoon para sa mga pinili. The answer is no. The reasoning is logically and theologically defective. Why? Those verses do say that Christ died for particular people. Okay? Yung mga verse na yon, yes, nagtuturo at nagsasabi na ang Panginoong Isong Kristo ay namatay sa particular na mga lupon ng tao. But, those verses do not say that those people are the only ones Christ died for. Pero hindi naman sinasabi ng mga, mga passage na yon na para lang sa mga taong yun namatay ang Panginoong Iso Kristo. <clears throat> Such a method of interpretation, if consistently applied, would force one to hold that Christ died only for Paul based on his testimony in Galatians 2.20. Sabi ng Apostle Paul, who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, <clears throat> tong verse na to, kung totoo to, uh, lahat tayo magdi-disagree na hindi lang kay Apostle Paul namatay ang Panginoon sa Kristo. Same sa mga verses na nabanggit natin kanina. This emphasis and line of thinking can be illustrated by the Great Commission of Baptism. Go ye therefore, sabi ng Panginoon, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Ngayon, pagdating sa Acts chapter 19, hindi na binanggit yung Father at saka yung Holy Spirit. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The question is, does this mean that they were not also baptized in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit? Okay. Ang ibig sabihin ba nito ay hindi din na din sila nabautismuhan sa pangalan ng Ama at sa pangalan ng Banal na Espiritu? The answer is no. However, the name of Jesus is being emphasized not to the point of exclusion. So, in this very moment, Acts chapter 19, verse number 5, the name of Jesus is emphasized, but it doesn't mean na yung mga nabautismuhan noon ay uh, hindi sila nabautismuhan sa pangalan ng Ama at sa pangalan ng Banal na Espiritu. The faulty reasoning to read John 10, 11 and uh, 15 and conclude that Christ only died for his ship and not anyone else is to say the following. So, this is the line of the thinking of limited uh, particular redemption uh, proponents. Sheep are those for whom Christ died. That saved are not sheep. The unsaved are not sheep. Therefore, the unsaved are not included among the ones who Christ died. So, parang ganito lang yan. That is just a illogical saying as dog have tails. Cats are not dogs. Therefore, cats do not have tails. Okay? In other words, to summarize this, ang kamatayan ng Panginoon ay sufficient sa lahat ng tao. But it is only efficient for those who believe. Okay? Again, his death, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, the act of His redemption, and the price of redemption is sufficient for all men. Diba? Sufficient yan sa lahat ng tao kahit sino. Napatay siya kahit kasino. But it is only efficient. Pero ito ay effective lang. Ito ay uh, uh, efficient lang for those who believe. Because if, if it's not... Pupunta tayo sa tinatawag nating teaching na universalism. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Namatay si Kristo at then ligtas na lahat. Hindi po, mga kapatid. The Bible teaches that Christ died for all. This of course does not mean that all are saved. Yun nga, universalism. But that all have the same opportunity to be saved. Lahat meron pong pare-parehas na oportunidad upang maligtas. The payment has been made whether or not is accepted, imputed, or benefited by. Yung kabayaran nandun na. Nabayaran na. Tangkatanggapin ba o hindi? Pero ang pinag-uusapan, 
nabayaran na yung kasalanan. John chapter 1, first John chapter 1, first John chapter 2. He is the propitiation for our sins. At tinutukoy yung mga mananampalataya na and not for us as only yung mga hindi pa mananampalataya, mga unbeliever, but also uh, uh, I'm sorry. He is the propitiation for our sin and not for us only yung hindi lang sa ating mga mananampalataya but also for the sins of the whole world. So this is very clear. And it is easy to understand. Yung mga mananampalataya, hindi lang si namatay ang Panginoong so Kristo sa mga mananampalataya na, kundi sa kasalanan ng sangkatauhan. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse number 4, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Number 3, who gave himself himself a ransom for all. Who is the savior of all? Men, especially of those that believe. Christ's death is sufficient for all, again, but only efficient for those who believe. Hebrews 2.9, Christ tasted death for every man. The grace of our God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. False teachers even denying the Lord that bought them. God offers salvation to all. God offers salvation to the world. God offers salvation to whosoever, whosoever offers 100 times in the New Testament. So, kung hindi namatay ang Panginoon para sa lahat ng tao, so, uh, is it is it not uh, lying to people sa mga makakabasa ng kanyang salita na kung sino yung, yung, yung maniniwala sa kanya ay maliligtas. Pero, kung merong, merong uh, probability na ang isang tao ay manampalataya sa Panginoon. God offers salvation to whosoever, kung sino yung maniniwala sa Kanya. Christ's death is limited in its application, but not in its provision. Let me explain this. Ang kamatayan ng Panginoon, perinubayad sa lahat. Binayaran ang kasalanan ng lahat. But, yung application ng Kanyang kamatayan upang tayo ay maligtas, it is limited Ano, ano, sa mga mananampalataya. Again, the sufficiency of Christ dead para sa lahat. But it is only efficient sa mga maniniwala. Sa Tagalog, namatay ang Panginoon so Kristo sa lahat ng tao. Pero, effective lang ito sa mga maniniwala. His atonement will only be applied to those who believe. Yet, it was wide enough for all people everywhere. If Christ did not die for everyone, then, when we share the gospel, we cannot say to the lost sinners, Christ died for you, since we would not know whether He did or did not. So, uh, dyan na po nagtatapos ang ating lesson sa redemption. Maraming salamat. Kung meron kayong mga tanong, uh, just comment down below. PME, Jomar Ligas, Messenger. You can disagree with me, but it's okay. Uh, na, I think, Kung hindi man tayo nagkakasundo sa mga gantong pagkakataon, yung mga bang viewers na makakapanood ng video na ito, it's okay. And bilang mga magkakapatid sa Panginoon, this pray for PBBTS na marami pang uh, uh, mga young people, mga tinawag ng Panginoon na matrain para sa kanyang gawain. God bless us all at pagpalaan tayong lahat na wakas.